Have you ever realized something and realized that you already knew it? <laughs> that might not make a lot of sense, but here's what I've dealt with with since I've started protesting the Church of Scientology. I have figured out that the police and politicians are corrupt and they don't really care. Does that sound like a big revelation? Well, that's what I mean. It's like something that you've already known your whole life, but then you see it on another level and it comes alive. And you realize, yeah, I knew the words, but when I saw it right up close, it shocked me. It was like a revelation, and that's weird. Any level, I should be in the top 1% or whatever of people that are kind of wise to what politics is all about. But what I learned through protesting Scientology and seeing the corruption and the lack of caring up front straight in my face is that I've known those words, yes, guilty, but I haven't really gotten it on another level until I see cops misusing their power and kind of looking at like, eh, what you going to do? Where the law is used to shield the people breaking it. The procedures are used for the police to hide behind. I have seen going to a police station to protest somebody being illegally arrested and then noticing that all the cops were driving their personal cars out of the police parking lot and had multiple infractions fully visible on their car. Illegal tinting, lack of a license plate on the front or the back of the car. In most occasions, most cars coming out of that L.A. Police Department parking lot were had some illegality. They were not registered, the registration had expired, the windows were illegally tinted, or there was no license plate on the car, or they drove out of the parking lot at night without their headlights on, or whatever, okay? Who's busting them? Nobody. They're all in it together. They all support each other in their law breaking. And then they throw the book at others who commit the same infraction. Politicians. But when you really experience it firsthand and you're looking the person in the eye and you see they're looking at you with contempt. They're looking at you with, what are you going to do? They're using the fact that you need to go through procedures that actually will shield them. For example, as Streets LA explained, if you make a complaint against a police officer... They have to respond, and the whole thing has to be done within a year. Once the complaint is in, then it freezes finding out other information, and I don't have the full de details. I'm doing this by memory. But basically, there's a lot of stuff you can't really do because they say, well, we can't, we can't comment because... We, the complaint is um, being investigated. There's an ongoing investigation. And what they do is they give some nothing response at the end of time, and then time is run out. So basically, they have a procedure. They'll take your complaint, they'll sit on it for a year, and nothing will ever happen. Are the police trying to be better? 
Are the police doing quality control, trying to give ever better service to the public? No. So what, it, what, it, what are the police doing? When you see multiple police cars arrive because Scientology called them, and you see police officers standing around doing nothing for a half an hour at a time, not even asking questions, not doing any kind of investigation, just wasting time and taxpayers' money. And you know that we are in a high crime area, Hollywood. There's crime all the time. But the police would rather be harassing people that are protesting Scientology than actually taking the risk at confronting a criminal. That's my opinion, at least. If you look at the politicians who allow foods to be sold in America that are not allowed in many other countries like Europe, certain kinds of sweeteners or grains or whatever, where you go to Europe for six months, you're going to lose some, uh, some weight, even though you go there and you pig out and you drink beer and wine every day because they don't have the same toxins in their food system. They don't allow the same Franken foods that America allows. They're a little bit thinner because of that. I mean, our stuff is getting to them and they are following in our trajectory. But just imagine if the police were yearning for a safe, they, you know, politicians could get rid of, rid of lobbyists tomorrow. But they're not going to do that. Because why would they do that? That's going to deprive them of dinners. That's going to deprive them of donors. That's going to deprive them of free jets they can ride on or whatever the hell they do. Imagine if the politicians woke up every morning and said, I want to make it better. What can I do to make things better here for the people? Does it look like that's what they're doing? So when you protest an organization like Scientology, it's not just about Scientology. It's about getting a peek into the corruption of the entire system. And that's what it's done for me. It's taken this guy who thought he knew so much about politics with a master's and blah, 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 and made me realize I'm still naive deep down. And I want to keep it that way. Because America is built on a sweet naivete. There's a, a subject for a whole other video. Imagine telling somebody back in the 1700s some European aristocrat. We're going to make a country where we aspire to have everybody equal. Uh, don't mind the slaves, but, you know. Um, we're going to get rid of, of the nobility, the aristocracy. We have no need for royalty. And we are going to vote our leaders from amongst ourselves. We are going to pick citizens that are voted on for temporary periods of time. They would have said, oh, that's naive. It's always been done this way. There have been kings since the beginning of time, since the Bible, whatever. You can't do that. And sometimes when you go to other countries like Europe with an American can-do kind of naive attitude of like everything is theoretically possible, you do get that attitude. But America has a level of corruption that feeds off of the fact that it has a highly uninformed citizenry and we don't understand how bad it is and we don't understand how good it could be some countries endeavor to actually take care of their people and protect them from bad things. In America, we sell the people to the highest bidder, whether it is 
data mining your information by um, information, whatever, computer companies, uh, internet, whatever, whether it is police corruption, whether it is food substances being given to us that, that shouldn't be. We have a dirty system. And when, when you look through the prism of Scientology, it's clownish that any politician like the mayor of LA, uh, of LA would stand up and say anything good about Scientology is hideous. It's ridiculous. What the hell? And the fact that any police department would protect them over those protesting them and would do it on camera in front of the world shamelessly. Like I've said many times, I think that we are at a point where things are changing, where these things will not be allowed to happen, where people are waking up and expecting more. We're expecting more than the two oldest presidential candidates in history that both seem to be suffering severe mental decline in different ways. It's becoming farcical how dumb the system is. So looking from Scientology, looking into this system provides a really unique perspective on just how entrenched the evil is, the corruption, and the plane just not caring. So we need to look at everything in terms of what do we really want? What, how could we make it better? We need to hold politicians to this sweetly naive image that built American democracy and realize that we have to stand up for our naivete, our dreaminess, our unrealistic visions of how much better things could be. And you can tell because they feel more at home with Scientology than with you and me. And that says a lot about them. We need to get them all out. And yeah, something to think about. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.